Hey guys, this is Kim from Creative DIY Purpose and welcome to my channel. Today I have three different quick thrift flip projects for you. And I'm actually not going to be putting these up for resale. I'm actually going to be keeping them. My son just left for college and we went on a last minute thrift haul. I was able to pick up a little side table that he could use for a nightstand. He's a biology major and has a major green thumb. So I decided to kind of go with a plant theme for these three projects. So if you like thrifting and thrift flips and vintage finds and just creative activities, please go ahead and subscribe. I'd love to have you join me on this creative journey. So let's get started. All right, so project number one is going to be the ceramic pot that I bought at a yard sale for 50 cents. And I wanna cover up that fresh popcorn because I want to turn it into a flower pot. So I'm just taking some sandpaper and we're gonna try to get rid of that smooth surface. And now I'm gonna make some faux cement and I'm taking a quarter cup of baking soda and I'm adding it in with some chalk paint and believe it or not, this is the gray is floor paint. I believe in using what you have on hand and it ended up working out great and giving me that faux cement look. My baking soda is a little lumpy because <laughs> that package actually came from my kids' science experiments, which is out on the side porch. All right, and now we are ready. And this actually does adhere really well. I've done this in the past and haven't had any problems as long as you spray it with a sealer when you're done. So you are just gonna put this mixture on any way that you choose. The first coat I wanted to add some texture to and then by the time that I do the second, I'm really slopping it on there. I will tell you that this mixture, if it sits out, it does harden up, and which, it, which is nice if you really want a good textured look. And then when I apply the next coat, which I don't show you here in the video, I actually brush the opposite way. So it adds a lot of texture that you're gonna see right here in this photo. And this is before it dried. And then once it dries, it's definitely darker. And what I'm doing here is I'm just dry brushing some chalk paint and it's the Rust-Oleum Linen White. And see, it just makes all of the details just pop. And you can do other techniques to age the pot, but I just really wanted this one just nice and crisp and clean and modern. And then I sealed the pot with polyacrylic. All right, and our third and final project is this orange table. For some reason, I can find orange tables and they, they follow me home. But I was thrilled because it actually all came apart, which makes sanding so much easier. Um, it had quite a wobble to it, and so we were able to fix that. 
but these spindles are absolutely beautiful. They gave me kind of a hard time with sanding them. I did take some time and hand sand in between all of those little cracks. So the, the top piece, the two shelves, the top piece and the bottom shelf, they're actually pressed wood. So my original plan was to, you know, try to make it as much to a wood color that I could, but I had to, to switch gears once I sanded it and realized what I was working with. So after I get everything sanded, I apologize that I don't have any other sanding coverage or taking it apart. It was so hot the day that I did this that my phone overheated outside and shut off. But look at those gorgeous spindles. All right, so this is actually how I made that mixture um, for the beginning project in this video. It's just some of the floor paint that I had left over and I already knew that if I mixed mixed it with the chalk paint that it was going to come out like a cement look because I've done that before. But I did not add baking soda. I just, I needed this table to be really durable. So what I did was I put on a coat and then I actually took a spray bottle of water, sprayed it and wiped some of that back, which I will show you a shot of that just so you can see. I wanted kind of a weathered look and it worked. Okay, so then I went on canva.com and I found this picture of a fern and I actually blew it up, did the measurements and it's out on two pages. Now I'm gonna warn you, this is only my third attempt on using the water slide decals and I have never done two pages. <laughs> I wish I would have had a little bit more practice under my belt, but what I can tell you, it prints out easy. I used an inkjet printer. What I will tell you is, you spray the, the decal once you print it out and you spray it with a sealer and then you let it dry. The trick here is not to put it in the water for too long, but also because you'll lose the sticky, but also to have it in enough where you don't get this. So I tried to line it up and then see how I was trying to move it. The whole thing moved except for the very top edges because my dish wasn't big enough and I didn't soak down the edges. Don't lift it up like I just did. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just putting it in there, getting the very edges on the top and the bottom, and then you just slide it with your fingers. You're gonna slide that backing paper, and what I'm doing now is sliding off the back. Oh, right there I did apply a little bit of water because that's gonna help hold that decal down while you're pulling out that paper. Now I did do that a little fast. You will well, see some bubbles, so it's kind of like a decoupage. But when you have the water under there, all you're doing is taking that cloth, I just used a washcloth, and you're removing all of the water. And then, whoops, I did accidentally an accident with that part. But you can see how easy it is to apply. Again, just make sure that you have water under there. And then I'm just pressing out all of the water. So this was a hot mess. And I, I'll give you a tip on this. What happened was it slid off the paper, slid off, and I had this whole entire decal. And what it did was it crumbled. So I learned my lesson. And honestly, at, when I was doing this, I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to rip this off and print out a new sheet. But I couldn't believe it. It Really, it let me move it all into position. So here I'm just getting out the excess bubbles and I do end up taking some of the white chalk paint and going around the edges and just kind of playing with it just to get a little bit of depth. And now I'm applying polyacrylic. I ended up doing three coats of this because it's going in my son's dorm room. It's gonna have cups and plants probably on top of it and I wanted to make sure it was durable. If this was staying at home, I would have used DIY white wax probably or some form of wax sealer. So the decal stayed down really nice. I didn't have any problems at all. They are really easy to use. I just need more practice. The only complaint that I have looking back hindsight is I probably would have just printed out on tissue paper and kind of decoupaged it 
because I really don't like the fact that you can see that clear plastic edge. Look at those beautiful chippy legs. I absolutely love them. I When I was applying the paint, I went through while the paint was still wet and was able to get off some of the paint to give it that chippy look. But overall, I'm super pleased with the way that it came out. I think it's unique and different. And I'm sure that it's going to brighten up his dorm suite and give him a touch of home while he's away. Thank you for joining me. Please comment below and share with me what your favorite project was. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button and join me for future videos. You guys have a super blessed week and I'll see you soon. Bye.